Somebody ought to say hallelujah. I have tears in my eyes because Karen is singing that song from experience. For the last 15 years, I've watched her come from somebody hating God. But we had a conversation right outside. To now lifting him up and knowing what he has to do. Cannot be paid. This is my sister, all of you know that. Can you, can you uh, uh, there was a request uh, for uh, those who are ministry of love or here uh, to sing this evening at AY. Uh, just play a little bit of that So you bet, you're going you know, to get ready for that. Get ready for that. The redeemed have to sing something. I was sitting, I was sitting here. I was sitting here. And I heard one or two praising God. But it's like most of us don't know that it's a privilege to be here.
proof. We got proof. Can you say that? Can you say it one more time? We got proof. Luke 18 and verse 8. If you have it, say amen. All right, still uh, uh, people looking. If you have it, say amen. The Bible says, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find what, everybody? Faith on the earth. Here's how the clear word puts it. I want to tell you that even though God sometimes seems to wait before he answers, he is eager to answer as quickly as possible. He will see that justice is done. But the real question is this. When God comes to set up his earthly kingdom, how many people will he find who still have faith in him? There is a pandemic. There is an emergency in the church where people are losing faith. It is the devil's objective to get you not to believe in God, not to believe in the pie in the sky by and by, but what you can get with your own hand. That's why he promotes us working hard. That's why he promotes us having our nice cars and fine houses and money in the bank so that we can look at those things and say, hey, I'm doing all right. I can take care of myself. I don't need a Jesus who's up in the heavens. My quiet up in heaven. Lord, you must be down the right road. And so we lose faith. There are times when he used uh, wealth and, 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 and possessions and things to, to bless us so that we can get away from looking to God. On the other hand, there are times the devil knows our personality. He is a masterful psychologist. So there are times when he uses pain and suffering and sorrow. Let him put a, a, a notice in your mailbox saying your house is going to be foreclosed. Are you still able to come to the house of God and praise him? Let something go wrong in your family and your family members turn their back on you. Are you still able to come to the house of God and say hallelujah? Yeah. 
God. Because the Bible says when you ask God to come in and the Holy Ghost come inside of you, then you are greater than anything or anybody in the world. Now, look at 1 John chapter 4, 17 and 18. Go down to verse 17 and 18. It says, Herein is our love made perfect that we may have what? In the day of what? You see, you can be bold in the day of judgment. You talk to most of you right now and say, are you on your way to heaven? Most of you say, well, I'm trying to get there. Uh -oh, I'm trying to make it. But the Bible says that you can have boldness in the day of judgment. Hey, it's not predicated on you. It's not you sticking your chest out and your spiritual ego is all fucked up. It's the fact that God is faithful. He will start a work in you and he will end that work in you. Yes, You're moving down the road and the devil is shooting arrows and attacking you and you down and dirty and you're like, God, you got me? He said, I got you. That's all right. Keep your head down. Keep moving. Everything is going to be all right. Oh, God, mercy. Come on now. When you 
you say, I'm striving. Yeah. It is a slap in the face of God. This is what Paul said to the Corinthians. There is no temptation taken you, but such as is what? Which means everybody suffered the same temptation. But who is what? See, you should have shot it right there. Somebody should have became Pentecostal running right up right now. What God has done for us. The text where David talks about grace and mercy, and he says, he keeps saying, mercy endures forever. It endures forever because God has commissioned. He told grace and mercy. He said, I got some knuckleheads down there. Matthews is the first one. And, 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 and he says, now, I don't care where he goes, what he does, you stick with him. Y'all don't hear me right now. He has to get some grace and mercy. Don't you know when you were sitting in that bar, where her right there? She don't mind telling you. Don't you know when you were sitting in that bar, sipping back on that gin and juice or whatever it was? Don't you know mercy was standing there looking at you? I know that. You see, the Bible says here, turn over to Hebrews. Turn over to 
there are people, I, I got to get moving. I, I can't hold it too long. I got, I got to keep moving. Turn, turn over to Hebrews chapter 11. Look at verse 1. Look at verse 1. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 1. You have to say that. All right, so the screen for me, The Bible says, now faith is the what? Of things, what? You hope it was something. You want something for Christmas. You want something for Christmas. I remember I used to tell my mom, yeah, can I get a, a G.I. Joe, that big gun? And I told her I wanted one of them big guns. That thing was big enough, they had to take two people to carry it. And I said, Mom, can I get that? And I started talking to her in like January. Can I get that gun? And, and what kept me? The substance. It is kind of like oatmeal. You, you, you know what I'm saying? You can eat oatmeal now. Now you eat grits or, or they say you eat some Chinese food that won't stick with you too long. But you eat a bowl of oatmeal. You might not need to eat something until 2 or 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Because that oatmeal will stick with you. And, and faith is, is the substance of what you're hoping for. Faith keeps it in current. It keeps it present on your mind. When the devil comes and says, you ain't going to get it. It ain't going to come. God ain't going to show up. That, that, that faith says, yes, he is. start singing that song by one of my favorite artists. Wait, I say on the Lord. <laughs> Sometimes confused. Y'all don't hear me. Sometimes it's you. But, but, but I'm going to wait on the Lord because my faith is strong. It is the substance of things hopeful. Then look at verse 6. Verse 6 says, but without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must what? That what? And that he is a what? Of them that diligently seek him. Don't you know the reason you don't get nothing when you come to God and say,
Uh, what am I studying? Right. And I said, man, you're going to step and be a preacher. <laughs> I'm going to tell you, if God were here, he'll tell you this is the truth. One hundred percent. So I'm sitting there, and finally, I get up the nerve. So I said, how are you? She told me my name. She said, ask me my name and everything. And so forth. She said, well, where do you go to school? I couldn't say, oh, what is it? Well, you know, I go to Indiana. <laughs> oh, she said, really? I said, yeah. She said, well, I, I go to Indiana. Yeah. <laughs> and so, and so, you know, she, we were talking to her, and, and she said, well, what you studying? I said, well, I'm, I'm kind of undecided. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to decide what I'm going to study. And she said, well, and she told me what she studied. She said, well, I don't want to talk about that. She said, I want to talk about the goodness of the Lord. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, you know the Spirit of God came to see. Don't pull the truth. And she just talking and praising God, and I'm sitting there just dwelling in my seat. But now I can't say, yeah, I'm going to be all See, you, you, you got to express your faith. You got to let folks know that God is your God. Because God says, if you speak of me before me, guess what? I'll be ashamed of you. And so the Bible tells us, we pick up the story, Daniel 3, 13. Stand up and let folks know who you are. Now you got to express it. Uh, 313, look at it. Then Nebuchadnezzar, in his rage and fury, commanded to bring Shaq like we Shaq and Abednego. Then they brought these men before the king. 14, Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, Is it true? O Shaq like we Shaq and Abednego, do not ye serve my God nor worship the golden image which I have set up? 15. Now, if you be ready, then at what time? You see, God, uh, uh, the devil's always going to give you a second chance <laughs> to kill yourself. <laughs> he's going to always give you a second chance. Amen. And you think he's doing something good for you. He'll give you a second chance to kill yourself. Now, if you be ready, then at what time you hear the sound of the cornet, the fruit, the harp, the sack, but softly and dulce one, and all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the image which I have made. Well, but if ye worship not, ye shall be cast the same hour into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. And, 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 who? <laughs> who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hand? See? I, I just got to walk over there. Because Nebuchadnezzar, in all of his glory and splendor, he was considered to be the God of earth. And so when he asked these three young men, one probably still a teenager, who, I, I can see it, that who reverberating all the way from this earth, all the way to the glory, and it, it reached the throne of God. Woo! Woo! <laughs> Jesus sitting there watching when that who reverberated up and all the angels looking like <laughs> Jesus stands up 
they not even shaking. And they standing before the most powerful man on the face of the earth as it was called. Nebuchadnezzar, who ruled the whole world. They said, Nebuchadnezzar, O king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. If it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning, fire, and fire. And he will deliver us out of thy hand, O king. You've got to express so God can show up. I don't care even in intimidating situations. You gotta have faith. But you're almost through. I didn't know that this phenomenon existed. But then when the Spirit showed it to me, I said, that makes sense. Finally, what you gotta have to get proof is you gotta establish your faith. The word established in the institute permanent. So right says when you got a made up mind, when you got a made up mind that nothing can change your mind.